First question is, two parts. Do you support the increased funding for NASA? And does the goal of other countries to establish a base on the moon pose a threat to our national security? Again, we will now alternate the order. Answers are two minutes. The follow-up from the first candidate will be one minute, and we'll start with Congressman Lance. Well, the technology that we learned we were going to from the moon is what protects us uh, today from foreign threats uh, to a great, great extent. As far as supporting the funding necessary to continue our leadership in the world, our technological growth, I led the fight in Congress to put the $300 million into last year's budget and the $2.2 billion above the President's veto threat this year. He said that it was not something that he was going to sign, thank goodness, because of the near unanimous vote of the House of Representatives and the voice vote in the Senate on the very last day he did indeed sign that. China and Russia posed a threat to us. Every time they have a success, or any of the other countries that are accomplishing the things like what China did recently when they had a spacewalk in the way from Shenzhou, uh, it puts us on notice no differently than the beeps of the Sputnik satellite that we heard in 1957. And if we don't pay attention to those, and if we choose to back off and allow ourselves to become in greater dependence on Russia for rides at the International Space Station, we don't recognize that we should be funding the programs that have given us the standard of living and the technological edge that we have, have built around this world, then we're relegating ourselves to the second class. We can't do that, ladies and gentlemen. NASA has been asked now for years to do more with less. It cannot. We passed the authorization that had a $2.2 billion increase in it in the face of the President's veto. My opponent said that there were no people in Washington who opposed this legislation. There are. And we'd have to be vigilant with our fight. We'd have to make sure that we can continue to excite the people who are going to support these, these pieces of legislation. Like the party members of Congress who went on the Cobell to watch STS 143 and came back huge supporters of space. I'll continue to be my, my leader as chairman of the Space and Aeronautics Subcommittee. Mr. Charles. Well, thank you very much for the question. As all of you know, I grew up here in the shadow of the Johnson Space Center, and the manned space flight program has had a significant impact on my life. I joined the Navy because I wanted someday to possibly be an astronaut. NASA's funding needs to be a critical national priority, and I absolutely support increased funding for NASA in the manned space flight missions. As all of you know, we've got a challenge ahead, ahead in our future. We've got a gap between the time we retire the shuttle and the time we start flying the next generation vehicle. It's critical, it's critical that we do everything possible to close that gap, and I pledge to you, I will do just that. I agree with the goal of going to the moon. I think it's our future, I think it's inevitable. Uh, and it's not just science that we're pursuing. It's, there's national security interests involved. As the Congressman mentioned, Russia, China, these are all countries that are trying to supplant our lead in manned space flight. We can't let that happen. For over 50 years, we have been the preeminent nation in manned space flight, and we can never give the high ground up. My congressman says he, the congressman says he supported NASA. However, in 2007, he voted to cut over $500 million from NASA's budget, and that hurt NASA. Even Administrator Mike Griffin said that did damage. But more importantly, my opponent is one of the biggest spenders in Washington. In 2007, there were 50 separate amendments to cut particular pork projects out of bills in the House. My opponent, my, my opponent voted for all 50 of them. It may not sound like that matters to NASA spending, but excessive pork barrel spending puts critical NAS national priorities like NASA at risk. NASA must compete with members' projects such as the Bridge to Nowhere, and that's simply unacceptable. I will focus my efforts on funding critical national priorities like NASA, while Nick Lansing votes for every earmark he sees, and that hurts NASA. <laughs> Pete, you've been to starting my record ever since you moved to Texas a year ago. I have done everything that I can in 
people sitting through this room have visited my office, have followed me around in my effort to make sure that we won support for a significant amount of commitment to NASA, specifically the $300 million in last year's budget, the $2.2 billion that we desperately need because it is still not enough to make up for the previous losses because of the shovel and the damage that was done to the tanks in, in, in previous storms. No one can question my commitment to NASA or the effort that I have made and will continue to make when I become chairman of the Space and Aeronautics Subcommittee. One of the major goals that I set for myself when I went to Congress 